Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you how to make rain in GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.8.22. I know I've been doing GIMP version 2.9.8, uh, but this tutorial requires a plugin that uh, is more readily available for GIMP 2.8.22, so I'll be doing the tutorial in this version. This is the latest stable version of GIMP. There is the newer version, as I just mentioned, uh, but it is considered a development version. But before I get started, I just want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. We've got plenty of video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check it out. You can also enroll in our online course on Udemy, GIMP Photo Editing from Beginner to Pro Photo Retoucher, and I'll include a link to that in the description. So we're using a couple free photos here from Pixabay, and I've got uh, some water droplets here, and then I've got a couple kind of looking up at the rain, uh, looking up as if it's about to rain. And I'll include the links to these in the description, as well as the link to the free rain brush that I'm using. And if you're not sure how to download brushes in GIMP, I do have an article, and I'll link that as well. And lastly, I am using the Gimmick uh, plugin. This is a free plugin for GIMP, and I'll include the link to that as well. So this is our final composition right here. And to get started, I'm going to go ahead and click on our original photo here, and you can go to File, Open to open this up into GIMP. Just, just find where you downloaded this on your computer and go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to grab my Move tool here. The first thing I want to do, you'll notice that this is a pretty bright composition, a pretty bright photo, and it doesn't match the dramatic mood of this photo here. So what I'm going to do first is click on that main photo. Go ahead and duplicate this so we do have a copy of the original photo. And I'm actually going to name this Rain Original and then Rain Adjustments. And I'm just double clicking on the layer name to rename these. And so now I'll just go ahead and hide that original Rain uh, layer just because we don't need it right now. And what I'm going to do is come over here and go to Colors, Hue, Saturation, and I'm just going to start making my adjustments here. And I'll start by decreasing the saturation a little bit. I don't want to go too much, but I just don't want this to look so colorful right now. I'm also not dragging it all the way just because that's going to make it a black and white image, which is also not what I want. And I'm going to come over here to my blue primary color to adjust and go ahead and change the color of this. I'm going to decrease the amount of blues in here. And then I'm going to come over to cyan as well and just decrease the amount of blues in there as well. And you can toggle the preview here to see a before and after. And I'm going to go back to the master here and just work on the lightness a little bit. And once we've made our adjustments there, I'll click OK. The next thing I want to do is come over to colors and I'm going to go to levels and I'm just going to adjust the levels here a little bit just to add a little bit more darkness into this image. And then I'll click OK. And then I'll also go to Colors, Brightness, Contrast. And I'm going to increase the contrast, but then I'm also going to increase the brightness a little bit here. And that's just adding a little bit of contrast to our image. And then click OK. And then I want to come over to Tools, Gaggle operation, and then I'm going to go ahead and choose color temperature for our operation. I'm just going to drag the intended temperature down a little bit, and that's going to make this composition a little cooler. Um, and that's just going to add to the sort of ominous effect that we're creating. And you can also adjust the original temperature as well, and that'll just kind of uh, play around with the colors a little bit. Click OK. And I do actually want to decrease the saturation of this a little more, so I'll go back to Colors, Hue, Saturation, and go ahead and turn that saturation down a little bit more, and click OK. Uh, right now the faces look a little ghostly, but we're going to work on that a little bit later, so you can just leave that as is for now. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is bring the rain into this layer. So to do that, I'm going to click on my Rain Adjustment layer, and then I'm going to come to Filters, Gimmick, and this is only going to be here if you install the Gimmick plugin. And then I'm going to come down to Degradations and then Rain and Snow. And the angle is going to be the angle at which the rain is falling in the photo. So um, you want this to kind of fit, you know, in this case the models are, are looking in a certain direction. So I'm just going to make this so that it kind of aligns with the direction they're looking in. And by the way, the lower the angle, the uh, more horizontal your rain's going to be. So 
if you lower this angle a lot, it's going to look like there's a ton of wind. Speed is um, how fast the raindrops are falling. So the more you increase the speed, the more it looks like rain. The slower the speed, the more it looks like snow. So keep that in mind. And then density is going to be how much rain is in the picture. I'm going to increase the density a little bit, but I don't want it to be too intense. And your opacity is how transparent this rain is going to be. And so I'm going to keep that at one. You can always adjust the opacity of the layer itself if you want it to be a little bit more transparent. And so I'll go ahead and click apply. And then I'll click OK. And that's going to add the rain to the layer. And uh, again, you can adjust the opacity of this layer um, if you think the rain looks a little too dense or a little too intense. And so I'm going to decrease this to around 75 or so. But uh, yeah, you can set this to whatever you prefer. Now the next thing I want to do is make it look like the rain is splashing up on the wood planks here on our uh, bench that they're sitting on. And so that's where this photo comes in of the raindrops. So I'm going to come over here to edit copy and then come back over to our composition and hit control V or edit paste. And that's going to add this as a floating selection. I'll go ahead and click to create a new layer and that's going to put this on its own layer. And then I'm going to change the mode to screen. And that's going to get rid of all the black. And then I'm going to grab my scale layer tool and then scale this down. And I'll scale it to about there for now. And I just clicked and dragged on that layer to scale it down. And then I'm going to bring this up here so that the horizon right here of where the water is splashing up meets with uh, the plank here, the top of the plank. And that way it looks like the rain is splashing on the plank. Um, but what I want to do is right click on this layer and I'm actually going to double click on it first and name this raindrops. And I'm going to right click on this and go to add layer mask and set this to white full opacity. And then I'm going to grab my brush tool and I just have a hardness of 50 set here. You can change the brush in here. And I have the color set to black and you can increase the size of this brush uh, using the size slider or the brackets on your keyboard, the left and right brackets. And then I'm going to erase everything up until where the plank starts to show behind his arm. I'm just decreasing using my bracket keys. And then I'm going to erase uh, pretty much up until the actual where the plank meets the uh, splash here. I do want to leave a little bit here because it it does kind of look like it's splashing in all directions. And then just make sure that you erase everything within this image here that you don't want. And now the next thing you can do is go ahead and duplicate this layer. Grab your move tool and go ahead and move that to the lower plank. And position that right there. And then make sure you have your layer mask selected. And make sure you're on the right layer as well and grab your brush and any excess here you can go ahead and paint out. Same with the uh, first layer that we painted with. And then go ahead and duplicate that again. Grab your move tool again and move that down to the final plank. And so this plank is a little longer which means we're going to have to grab our brush tool, switch over to white and make sure we're on our uh, layer mask. Sorry, I'm going to hit Control Z. I accidentally painted white on the uh, image itself. So uh, go ahead, grab your layer mask and paint some of this back in. Switch back over to black and then paint this stuff out. We don't want this to be too prominent because uh, it will look kind of fake. And then click on your actual layer to use the move tool. And I'm going to go back and clean this up a little bit on my layer mask. Okay, now it looks like the rain is uh, bouncing off of the wood planks here. And so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and same thing, edit copy. And I'll come over to our composition and go to edit, paste, or control V. And that'll paste this on its own floating selection layer. Create a new layer. I'll name this raindrops left because this will be on the left side of our image and then change the mode to screen again and with our move tool go ahead and 
move this over a bit, but uh, first we do have to grab our scale tool and scale this down. So I'll do that. I'm holding control while I scale. Uh, that's gonna ensure that it scales proportionately. And then I'll hit the scale button here, grab my move tool and move this over here. And now I want to do the same effect, but I'm going to do it for the left side now. So go ahead and right click and click add layer mask and set that to white. Grab your paintbrush tool and go ahead and paint out all this excess. And then go ahead and duplicate this. And you can see when I duplicated it that there's some uh, artifacts over here. So you can just go back to the original and paint those out and then go back to your duplicated one and paint those out as well. Grab your move tool and go ahead and control Z. Uh, make sure that you're clicked on the layer itself and not the layer mask. So go ahead and drag this down. And I can see some more artifacts over here. So I'm gonna grab my paintbrush, click on the layer mask and paint those out. And then I'll duplicate this one more time, grab my move tool and drag this last piece down, grab my brush and make sure that any part of her coat that shouldn't be overlapped by this is erased and then erase all the artifacts. So now we've got all the planks with this uh, sort of splashing effect here and that looks pretty good. So now what we want to do is put some splashes up here on these bricks and then you can maybe even put some up here uh, if you wish. And so the way I'm gonna do that is go ahead and duplicate again one of these uh, raindrop layers. I'm gonna duplicate this one. So I'll hit the duplicate button, uh, come up here and just kind of align this so that it looks like the rain is splashing off of here. And you're gonna to wanna to grab uh, the layer mask again and then grab your paintbrush and just paint away anything that's kind of hanging off of this brick. And then go ahead and duplicate that again and drag that over to this side. Make sure you're on your layer mask and paint away the excess. And you can do that as well to this piece of wood here. I'm gonna skip it for now just for time's sake. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is create a new layer and we're gonna name this rain brush or rain brushes and make sure it's set to transparency, click okay. And I'll go ahead and move this to the top. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab those rain brushes. And again, if you don't know how to install brushes in GIMP, definitely check out my article on my website. I'll have a link to that in the description. But uh, down here are my brushes. This is the brushes, patterns, and gradient dock over here. And so right here, I've got a brush. It says rain brush right here, and this is the author. And so now I'm going to switch my color to white. And with my rain brushes layer selected, I'm just going to basically click several times around the edges of the objects where I think there should be rain kind of splashing off. So, you know, I've got the coat here. They're protecting themselves in the rain with this coat. And so there's water splashing off the coat. And so I'm pretty much just doing the edges that face the direction of the rain. So. Um, you don't want to do like over here. That doesn't really make sense. So, you know, just keep in mind basic physics, how this is going to be splashing off here. And then I'll also do their legs here because it does appear as if their legs are exposed. And so we want to have a little bit of rain splashing off of their legs here. And now this is a little bit too opaque, um, a little bit too prominent in the image. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the opacity slider for this image and just adjust the opacity a little bit. So it's a little more subtle. And you can also kind of add some paint splashes um, to these parts here to kind of enhance the water splashing off of the planks over here. And the last thing I want to do for this image is go ahead and actually there's two things left I want to do for this image. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this main uh, rain adjustment layer, click on it and then come over to tools, Gaggle operation, and then I'm going to come down to vignette here. And that's just going to add a vignette around my main composition. And you can go ahead and copy my settings here for the vignette and click OK. And now what I'm going to do is hide that layer with the vignette and click on my rain adjustment layer, the main one we started with. And I'm going to go to uh, colors, hue saturation. 
And I'm actually going to turn the saturation up a bit on this. And then click OK. And then what I'm going to do is click back here on our duplicated layer here. I click the unhide button so we can show this layer again. Right click and go to add layer mask and set this to uh, white full opacity and click add. And then we're going to grab our paintbrush, make sure the color is set to black, and we're going to paint on the faces of our models here. And what that's going to do is just bring out some of the brightness in their skin. And that helps shift some of the focus to um, these models and just bring some of the life back into their skin. And I'm going to make sure that I uh, paint over the um, arms and hands as well. And then the last thing I'm going to do is click on this layer and go to Filters, Enhance, Unsharp Mask. And that's just going to sharpen this up a little bit. And you can uh, move around the preview box here if you need to. And I have the radius set to 5 and the amount set to 0.5. I'll just go ahead and click OK. And that goes ahead and sharpens our image up a little bit. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. Enroll in our Udemy course, which I'll include a link to that in the description. And you can follow us on social media, facebook.com slash daviesmediadesign, and Twitter at daviesmediades. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.